reporter telling people that this Mendocino fire was the fourth largest in state history. By the middle of my show, it was already the second largest, and now today, the largest. What's going on with the Mendocino complex fires? The largest fire to ever torch California is today raging out of control. Overnight, the Mendocino complex fire blazing its way into the history books scorching 443 square miles, a burn zone larger than Philadelphia and New York City combined. Cataclysmic wildfires devastating California and breaking records. The Mendocino Complex fire charring almost 300,000 acres, making it the largest wildfire in state history. So far, it has scorched an area larger than all of New York City's five boroughs put together. Another fire erupting Monday in Orange and Riverside counties, the Holy Fire, has already burned over 4,000 acres. Across the Golden State, 17 large fires are raging as more than 14,000 firefighters battle the fast-moving flames that are spurred on by dry and windy conditions. We get straight to the latest on those devastating wildfires out west. Scenes like this just unbelievable, showing the devastation in Northern California. Walls of flames surrounding those roads, and now the death toll is rising. At least eight people killed by those fires. The largest of them, those fires, the car fire, scorching more than 95,000 acres, destroying nearly 900 structures. It has forced 38,000 people to evacuate. Thousands of firefighters are hitting the front lines, working 24-hour shifts to battle the flames. ABC's Kana Whitworth is there on the scene of the car fire in Redding, California. Good morning, Kana. George, good morning, and they have been doing those shifts for days on end, and many first responders losing their own homes. This fire moved incredibly fast and burned very hot. I mean, look at this. It is reducing these homes to just ash. And as I walk this way, I mean, it destroyed entire communities. I want to show you right here. You see just the front door left of this home. And as I walk this way, I want to take you to a wider shot so that you can really grasp what we're talking about here. This is three separate homes, but I'm telling you, there is destruction like this for 149 square miles. The monster car fire obliterating neighborhoods. More than 90,000 acres burning so far. I don't even care about my house right now. I just want to know where my husband is and if he's safe. Nearly 40,000 people under evacuation orders. The flames exhausting fire crews residents growing desperate. After 10 wet days, more than 17 inches of rain fell in parts of Florida, and it keeps coming. Conditions perfect for sinkholes, and that's exactly what's happened. In the last two weeks, more than 30 sinkholes in central Florida. Makes me real uncomfortable even going close to my house. They got a lot of work to do to fix this up. In some cases, sending a warning signal of what's to come. Whoa. Why is this state so prone to sinkholes? Florida's sandy soil sits on top of a layer of clay and a layer of limestone. The recent heavy rains dissolved those underground layers, causing the earth to give way. There were other warning signs too, but the residents who live along the golf course here at the villages didn't know how to read them. In a matter of moments, without warning, the lake here went dry. Geologists say it was the clearest indication of what was to come. In the villages where two houses are now condemned, that small divot in front of the Flegler's home leading to the same question every morning this week. How's the hole? Was it any bigger? You know, so not, needless to say, it's always in the back of your mind. Because but, you're not really given much of a warning by Mother Nature, are you? No, we're not. Here in what's called Sinkhole Alley, the fear tonight is more surprises like this. In the last 24 hours, six new gaping holes have opened up here in Ocala. With a storm brewing in the tropics, that means more rain will drench this area, meaning that these holes may get larger and new ones could develop. A massive crack in the ground that's estimated to be up to 50 feet deep has opened up in Kenya seemingly overnight. The crack stretches along Kenya's Great Rift Valley, and many scientists believe it could end up splitting the continent apart.
realizada en la comunidad campesina Ayunto, en Chumbivilcas, Cusco, volvió a extenderse ocasionando un desprendimiento de tierra que dejó graves daños materiales. El hecho se registró alrededor de las 3 de la madrugada y provocó el colapso de 37 viviendas, el centro de salud, un tramo de 300 metros de carretera y amenaza con destruir un centro educativo de primaria y secundaria. Los cultivos también se echaron a perder con estas nuevas grietas que continúan avanzando. Un cerro de la comunidad se deslizó y la tierra cayó sobre un riachuelo. Can I say that I'm done with Colorado? That's hail. My poor baby. Another one. Right. Hope these guys got glass insurance. <laughs> My God. The monsoon rains have come. More than 250 millimeters of rain fell in a 24 hour period. The highest recorded rainfall in one day for nearly four decades. Many motorists were left stranded as roads turned into rivers. We have been on the road for two hours. It has taken us two hours to get here. Normally, it's a five-minute drive. Some are blaming authorities for the chaos, accusing them of failing to plan for wet weather conditions. Every person is getting humiliated here on the roads. These politicians have no shame at all. They should compare this to the roads outside their own houses. They have built places for themselves. They live like mogul kings. There is a limit to injustice. Whatever road you go on, it is filled with water. We are extremely distressed. Politicians claim to have turned Lahore into Paris. Show them this mess. The rainfall has caused power cuts, plunging large parts of the city into darkness. Authorities say they are working on restoring power and fixing the city's draining system. But with more rain on the way, people are being warned to prepare for more disruption. Legalizing sexual child abuse, yes, pedophilia, is now classified as a sexual orientation. Yes, hard to believe. Uh, Truth in Action News is reporting the unthinkable. They write that this would seem to be the very first step in tolerating the sodomizing of children. Pedophilia is now officially classified as a sexual orientation under the, the politically correct term minor attracted person. Apparently now people can classify themselves as heterosexual, homosexual, asexual, metrosexual, and then there are endless sexual orientations under the sun and now pedophilia can be added to the list 
Now, apparently in the fifth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the American Psychological Association drew a very distinct line between pedophilia and uh, pedophilic disorder. Pedophilia refers to a sexual orientation or uh, profession of sexual preference devoid of consummation, whereas pedophilic disorder is defined as a compulsion and is used in reference to individuals who act on their sexuality. APA's decision has given rise to numerous pedophilia advocacy groups, the chief of them being uh, B for You Act. It's uh, literally spelled the letter B, the number four, the letter U, and then ACT. They are a nonprofit grassroots organization based in Maryland, and they were created back in tw uh, 2003 primarily as a means for minor attracted persons to be open about their sexual preferences in a supportive atmosphere. Before You Act is now widening the scope of their organization, and that is according, uh, according to spokesperson and registered sex offender Paul Cristiano. The Pedophilia Advocacy Group is working towards destigmatizing the mental health community. Uh, Cristiano explained that the negative societal attitudes towards minor attracted persons trickle down to policymaking and the mental health community. Wow, that's a story I never thought I'd actually read. Apparently now the um, a pedophilia is, uh, is a sexual orientation. And if you go to the link in the description, it goes into much greater detail about uh, the, the definition and how they define, you know, pedophilia. And it's not, it's, they say that this group, oh, well, it's, you know, you can fantasize about, uh, I can't believe I'm talking about this, but sex with children uh, as long as you don't act upon it. So somehow that makes it okay. I don't quite understand it, but uh, I'm sure that it's going to have some very, very negative consequences, especially on our children, if this continues to be a permissible, uh, you know, sexual orientation. I mean, everywhere you look today, uh, you know, everyone's trying to define themselves in a sexual manner. It's just, uh, I don't know, up is down and left is right. My administration is reclaiming America's heritage as the world's greatest spacefaring nation. The essence of the American character is to explore new horizons and to tame new frontiers. But our destiny beyond the Earth is not only a matter of national identity, but a matter of national security. So important for our military, so important, and people don't talk about it. When it comes to defending America, it is not enough to merely have an American presence in space. We must have American dominance in space, so important. Very importantly, I'm here by directing the Department of Defense and Pentagon to immediately begin the process necessary to establish a space force as the sixth branch of the armed forces. That's a big statement. We are going to have the Air Force and we are going to have the Space Force, separate but equal, it is going to be something so important. Legions of welders and metal workers, scientists and engineers stand ready to build a powerful new rocket and gleaming new spaceships. And that goes with all of the other things that we're building in our country. Our nation of pioneers still yearns to conquer the unknown. Because we are Americans in the future, belongs totally to us. Once more, we will launch intrepid souls blazing through the sky and soaring into the heavens. Once more, we will summon the American spirit to tame the next great American frontier. And once more, we will proudly lead humanity. And that's what it is. It's humanity beyond the earth and into those forbidden skies. But they will not be forbidden for long. Remember, economically, militarily, scientifically, in every way, there is no place like space. 
Good luck. General Dunford and the Joint Chiefs, I want to wish you a lot of luck with Space Force. But that shows how important it is. Congratulations on your tremendous success, but you're going to have far more success right now.